Welcome to the second part of my tutorial series, in which I cover the basics of using Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit. In the first part, we set up our project with the required XR packages and settings, so that we were ready to start developing a virtual reality app using the XR Interaction Toolkit. We are working with the MetaQuest 2, although you should still be able to follow along using a different headset. So, assuming that you have completed all the steps in part 1, we are ready to start setting up our VR scene. We can begin working with the project sample scene, which should be the only scene in the project at the moment. First of all, we need to remove a couple of unnecessary game objects from the scene. The first object we are going to remove is the main camera. We don't need this since we are going to be using an XR rig, which contains its own virtual camera. The second object is the global volume, which is used during post-processing and we won't be doing any post-processing in this project. Delete both game objects. The next thing we want to do is create a floor, so that when we view our scene, we don't have the impression that we are floating in mid-air. To do this, go to the top menu and select Game Object, 3D Object, and then Plane. Make sure that the plane is positioned at the scene origin, that is, position 0, 0, 0. Next, let's add a cube which we will later use as a plinth, onto which we will place our interactive objects. Again, go to the top menu, select Game Object, 3D Object and then Cube. Now, I'm going to place the cube slightly forward of the scene origin. I'm also going to stretch it along its x-axis. Let's give our plinth a bit of colour. First, go to the Project's Assets panel and inside of Assets, Create a Materials folder. Now create a new material, give it a name and give it a different colour from the floor. I've made a pink material. Now drop the new material directly on top of the cube in the scene view. This will apply the material to the cube. OK, we are ready to add an XR rig to the scene. Right click inside the hierarchy panel. A context menu will appear. Select the XR submenu and then XR origin action based. An XR origin object will appear in the scene hierarchy. Again, make sure that the XR origin is placed at the scene origin, which is world position 0, 0, 0. Let's also expand the XR origin so we can see what it consists of. The XR origin is in effect our XR rig. Some of you may also be wondering, what is an XR rig? Let me briefly explain. An XR rig is the interface between your VR hardware, which is typically your headset and controllers, and your VR scene. The XR rig contains virtual counterparts to your VR hardware devices, and it tracks their position, orientation and input actions. So for instance, the XR rig contains a virtual stereo camera, which tracks the position of your headset. This is basically the main camera inside XR Origin. Your touch controllers are also tracked and represented within virtual space, so that you are able to manipulate virtual objects through them. Here the touch controllers are represented by the left hand and right hand controller game objects inside of XR Origin. Anyway, there's an immediate change that we should make to the root XR Origin object, and that is to set the tracking origin mode to floor. This applies if you are using MetaQuest, or indeed any other headset that tracks 6 degrees of freedom. Incidentally, 6 degrees of freedom simply means that your headset tracks both its rotation and its position in 3D space. Most of them do. OK, let's test what we have so far. Make sure your headset is connected to your PC, and that you have put it into Quest Link mode. Now go back to the editor, hit the play button, and once play mode starts, put on your headset. You will notice that you will be able to look around your VR scene, but that there is nothing representing your touch controllers. Let's fix that next. Take off your headset, go back to the Unity editor, and click the play button once again to exit play mode. In order for our XR rig to work correctly, we need to add a few more assets to make the XR rig play along with Unity's new input system. To get these assets, we need to go back to the Package Manager. 
Once again, go back to the top menu and select Windows and then Package Manager. In the Package Manager, scroll back down to the XR Interaction Toolkit that you previously installed. Select it and then expand the samples list. Import the starter assets. The starter assets contain a collection of presets that will help us configure the input settings for our controllers. Close the package manager. We will now use our newly acquired presets to configure the touch controller input settings in our XR rig. In our hierarchy panel, select left hand controller. OK, take a look at the inspector panel. Notice that the hand controllers have these XR controller components attached. This component is part of the new action-based input system. The XR controller receives values from a tracked input controller device, such as a touch controller. It then interprets these values as an input action. You will notice that the XR controller component has a number of slots for various actions such as select or activate. These slots need to be populated by the relevant input action objects so that we can respond to the corresponding actions in our app. Don't worry if this makes no sense right now, we will cover the input system in detail in the next tutorial. For now, we will simply set up the required components so that we have a working XR rig. We will explain our setup later. Anyway, back to the XR component. It can take some time to set up each of the input actions here, so we are going to use a shortcut. With the left hand controller selected, go to the XR controller component in the inspector panel. In the top left of the component, you will notice three small icons. Notice the middle icon, which looks like a couple of sliders. This allows us to select a preset. Click on it and a small window will appear, listing the available controller presets in your project. These presets are in fact, part of the starter assets package that you imported. In the Select Preset window, click on XRI Default Left Controller. Close the window. You will notice that the XR Controller's action slots have all been populated. Now, in the Hierarchy panel, select the right hand controller. Once again, go to the Inspector and hit the Presets icon in the XR Controller component. This time, select the XRI Default Right Controller. OK, one more thing remains we will need to drop an Input Action Manager into the scene. This is basically a script that enables all of our actions, so that they can listen and respond to input. The script needs to be attached to a game object in the scene hierarchy. Let's keep things tidy and attach the Input Action Manager to the XR Origin object. Now, take a look at the Input Action Manager component in the Inspector. Notice there is an empty list waiting for you to add action assets. Click on the plus sign at the bottom of this list to create an empty slot or element. Now, notice the target icon on the right side of this slot. Click on it. An input action asset selector will appear. Select XRI default input actions. Close the selector. OK, we are all done here. Let's test our app once more. Hit the play button to enter play mode. OK, here we are again in our VR scene. However, now you can clearly see two red pointers, which are tracking the direction and position of our touch controllers. That's it for this tutorial. In the next one we shall take a more in-depth look at the input system. But for now, goodbye and happy questing.